Thank you folks for being here as we wind up the last day of the legislative session. Um, you know, really, I was talking to John earlier, and this session seems like a Twinkie. It uh, fills you up, there's some, but there's just nothing of real substance or value to it as we move forward. So uh, we're hoping uh, that uh, as the uh, day goes on and folks back home understand that, uh, we get some traction on things that really matter in the state of Indiana, like trying to fix DCS. Instead of fixing DCS, we, uh, we uh, passed a bill that uh, said you could uh, buy uh, alcohol at Walmart on Sunday. Um, job training and wages, I'm not sure. Maybe Senator Landon can tell you. We've done a whole lot of talking about that, but we've not really done anything of any substance to try to make sure that our workers are better trained and our, our employment uh, opportunities are better. Um, elections, completely discouraged and exasperated, I think, like most Hoosiers. Uh, as we came to the session, there was a lot of talk about ending gerrymandering, uh, also ending uh, the uh, practice of legislators choosing their constituents rather than constituents choosing their legislators. Uh, we uh, saw some uh, fancy square dancing going on uh, in yeah. the chambers, but when it came down to fiddle time, uh, the band went home. So uh, we didn't get anything at all there. Uh, really, uh, as we move forward, uh, it's uh, a pretty good cause uh, for those folks who don't think we need to have a short session. It was a pretty good session for those folks to use as proof that we maybe don't need to have one. So with that, I'll hand yeah. the baton over to Senator Lamb. Well, thank you, Leader Gooden. I guess, you know, probably the best way I would uh, sum up what appears to be uh, this session is a disappointing dud. Um, we just really, in terms of significant legislation that affects the everyday lives of Hoosiers, you know, okay, yes, you can purchase alcohol on Sunday. How many years did it take us to finally get, get that done? Uh, other than that, I mean, when it comes to the issues you've talked about there, uh, no redistricting re reform. Uh, add to the list something, Indiana will remain again for another year, one of five states without any biased crime legislation on the books. We just can't seem to get it done. I think there might be some proposal, you know, to study it again or something, but I mean, how many years do we have to study something before we realize if you're only one of five in the state, you need to actually act finally. But again, no, uh, no legislation on biased crimes. You know, when we came into session, there was a crisis in regards to DCS. Now, the governor, of course, is the audit's being conducted. We've been, I think, um, advised twice on this, twice. but still at this point in time, I don't know exactly what the problems are with DCS or what the plan is going forward in terms of fixing it. Are we absolutely sure that our children are going to be protected? We're going to leave this session. I think that, that question is unfortunately going to be an open, an open question. And then on the issue of workforce development, again, this was supposed to be the workforce development session. Wrong. Uh, we've we've uh, changed a lot of names on some agencies. Um, I thought the idea was we were going to streamline, we were going to make the the system more efficient, but it just seems to me we've done basically just rearranged the furniture on the deck, you might say. And I think there's some recognition that, well, maybe we did a start. Of course, we've got to wait till the rest of the day to find out what we really have, but we're going to have to come back and do what we've done before, which is once again, look at workforce development and what do we need to do. So we didn't get that that job done this this time as well. So um, it just seems, uh, in my years down here, this is one of the least productive sessions that I can remember. Yeah, well, the, on the issue of, uh, <coughs> a couple things you brought up, brought the issue of hate crimes as well as the issue of redistricting. One of the response about hate crimes has been judges already have that authority yeah. And the other thing on the issue of redistricting, we just saw in Pennsylvania a Democrat win in a place where Republicans had won for years, Donald Trump won by 20 points. So is it really a matter of districts or is it just a matter of just finding you know, the right candidates that fit? Because obviously it looks like Democrats can win under well, the right circumstances. Here's the point. Well, absolutely. But why should the system be rigged against them? And you have to overcome the rigged system. Um, people know that the the complete motive in terms of what, the way we draw the districts right now is a political advantage for the majority party. And is that what redistricting is supposed to be about? Or is it, or is it supposed to be about good government where we have competitive elections where we preserve uh, you know, communities of interest, we keep uh, uh, districts compact and those type of things? They couldn't even pass that pill this year. So no, there's absolutely no reform when it comes to redistricting this year. Hate crimes, uh, you know, that's a, the, this argument that, well, judges can already do this. Well, that's true. We have a list of 12, I think it's 12, aggregating, uh, aggravating factors that the judges uh, can look at. 
underneath the logic of, well, judges can do it already, you wouldn't have any of those 12. What we're saying is this is such an important thing that if you're going to commit a crime based upon a person's race, uh, their religion, these other factors, we think we are saying to the judge as policymakers, you can and you, you should look at that as an aggravating factor, just like you can look at some of these other aggravating factors. We think it's an important statement. That's why 45 other states have done it. Why hasn't Indiana? We have less than 12 hours left in this session for this year. What bills or legislation are Democrats in both houses hoping to get pushed through tonight? You know, I think the most important issue as we talk about what's left is, is obviously we can't talk about what's already been passed. It's done and over with. But we talk about what's left is the, is the uh, workforce development issue. We have got to create an opportunity in the state of Indiana where we can get folks trained. We can get them into good jobs. I know all you folks saw the research and the study that came out in U.S. News and World Report that said that <laughs> Indiana's quality of life was 48th in the nation. That doesn't say a lot about the state of Indiana, or maybe it says a whole lot about the state of Indiana. So, you know, we can brag about having uh, the best uh, business environment in the United States, but let's try to balance that out and also have a great place for, for people to be able to live and raise their families. So I think that's probably, as we move forward, what's left on the table could be probably the most important issue. What's your reaction to the student walkouts we saw today? I know students just up the road on Meridian Street were calling on you guys to pass reforms when it comes to gun legislation, also school safety measures. You know, I think it's I think it's great. I think any time we can uh, get students involved uh, with their First Amendment rights, I think that's right. wonderful. And I think they're exercising that, and I think we, can, we need to see more of that. And, uh, as we move forward, hopefully we will see more uh, participation from the young folks in our, in our society. I totally second what the leader said. This is about the First Amendment rights of those students. And they're making an, an important statement, which is um, we haven't gotten the job done as policymakers across this, this country, basically, to make sure that they're protected. And they're simply saying to us, protect us. Make sure that, that we are safe in our schools. And by gosh, I think that's they're going to be commended for, for taking uh, that action on their part and expressing their, 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 their feelings about that in a great way. Leader Gooden, you're a, you're a school superintendent. Mm -hmm. Would you want to see schools discipline those students who walk out? No, as a matter of fact, uh, we, uh, we notified our students in our school corporation that we're going to have, to or have an orderly walkout. The students, there's some students that did participate. I got a report back from the principal, and it all went well. The folks uh, that walked out, they were able to uh, to practice their First Amendment rights. They came back in orderly, and everything went right back to normal. So I think it was a, it was a good exercise of yeah. uh, democracy and uh, a good a great exercise of their constitutional rights. Yeah, I think a lot of school districts are handling it that way, Leader, mm -hmm. if I understand correctly. So it's a real civics lesson in that it regard. Is. It is. Is allowing guns in schools connected to churches the way to improve school safety? I've said that I think now is not the time for us to do any of that legislation. I think rather than uh, taking any action which appears in any way to be relaxing our gun laws in the state of Indiana, it rather is a time for us to reflect upon our, our gun laws and to review them. So uh, I would urge us to absolutely do nothing in that regards this year. We perhaps ought to, in a, a study committee, take a look at one of our, our gun safety laws in the state of Indiana and see if we need to in some way change those to make sure that our students are safe. Um, but uh, I personally don't think allowing uh, guns in schools is a way to, to do that. Terry, um, one of the things, kind of going back to the Pennsylvania special election, uh, there's been a lot of literature written over the past 24 hours about how Lamb, the Democrat who won, was kind of a lot like you, you know, that sort of conservative. Uh, Good looking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. That, that kind of right. conservative Democrat that yeah. understands those types of issues. Right. Uh, you were recently featured in an article in Politico not too long ago. Do the National Democrats need more Democrats like you from you know, more rural areas, more conservative, to be competitive in the 2008 midterms? Well, I think what we need to have to begin with is we need to have fair districts so the people that represent those districts actually represent the values from those districts. And I think if we have the, the folks that represent the values from those districts, I think those are the folks that are going to be elected. So more so. Democrats like you in those types of places? Yeah. Well, uh, wherever they're from, they need to be. They need to reflect the areas that they're from. And uh, if they're from an area like I'm from, and I feel great about what goes on in my area and, and the values that I bring up here from the folks that send me here, that's different from Tim's area and different from probably from every every area that you folks are, come from or hail from as well. But let me just say this as a Democrat, I would welcome more members like uh, Terry Gooden for sure. Because one of the things I believe as a Democrat is we should be a big tent and we should welcome in everybody with that. Uh, it adheres to the basic democratic principles, but we can have a difference of, of, of degrees in that regards. And I think we, uh, we we welcome everyone to come to the Democratic yeah. uh, Party. Minority Leader Gooden, what do you think about the gun debate? Do you think that 
we need more restrictions on guns? You know, I think what we need to do is we need to have a grown-up conversation. I think everything should be on the table. I don't think no side should be able to bring anything or take away anything from the table that could, should not be discussed. And I think when we get to that point, and quite frankly, uh, just the backside of that, I think gerrymandering causes or prevents uh, that conversation from taking place. But I think when we can get to the point where grown-ups can actually sit down at the table, and uh, I think we, when we do that and we can discuss what we need to do, I think we can get this resolved. I think there's common ground there. And I think we could take a real civics lesson. I'll, I'll borrow the words from Senator Lannon. We can take a real civics lesson from the young folks from Lafayette who uh, worked for five years. They, they toiled. They got, they sat together, with, sat down, worked through the grown-up and the say fireflies now for the state insects. So I think legislators, grown-ups, can take a real lesson from what they accomplished here in the legislature. Can you speak to House Bill 1230? Is that enough to keep the schools themselves safe? House Bill 1230, uh, as it uh, came through, I've not seen completely all of the language in that. I know we're still going to we're going to deal with that uh, as the day goes on. So I, I I can comment on language that may or may not be what the bill is. I'd rather not do that because as soon as I say this is what's wrong with it, it would be great if they change it that way, but they may make it worse. So I can't comment on the language that I don't know yet. But I think what we need to do in school safety is. Once again, we need to bring educators to the table. We've got to bring people who are in the, in those arenas and in those settings to try to determine whether or not they want to be a part of that. And so we, if we bring everyone to the table, I think we can come up with a conclusion. Is that not happening right now? Are educators not a part of the conversation? You know, I, I've not uh, seen that happen here in the legislature. I know there's in the committees there's been uh, legislators doing a lot of talking, but I've not seen any educators being brought up to the podium to talk about what they what they should do. And as we talk about bringing folks to uh, the table is not just necessarily even in the legislature. I think we should have a uh, an opportunity where we go visit schools and we go around the state and say, hey, what, what do we need to do to make your school safer? Not only do we need to have educators at the table, we need to have parents there as well. We also need to have the guardians or anyone that, that's involved in the school community. They all need to have a say in the, in the, uh, in the final verdict. After today, what can be done, what needs to be done legislatively in terms of the DCS allegations from Mary Beth Bonaventura? Can I ask this question from the folks? That, has DCS spoken to Mary Beth Bonaventura yet? Have they actually got her aside and asked her what she felt was wrong with the system? To my knowledge, they still have not spoken to the lady that brought all this to light. And we're the third month into this investigation, right. and I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. What, what are you afraid of to actually bring the lady in and, and ask her what's going on? What happened? Yeah. What, what is the problem here? And I, I hope they have, right. uh, but I have not seen the evidence of that. If you folks can enlighten me, I'd appreciate it. Here was it. the essence of what I saw was the problem. You had the director saying that she felt her hands were being tied, that her budget was being cut. And I want to make sure that's not the case now. I want to make sure that, w that uh, we're not tying anyone's hands, that we're not restricting the funds that are necessary to make sure our children are protected. I don't know that I've got an answer to that right now. To be honest with you, uh, we keep, you know, quite frankly, on well, the last advisement we got was that, you know, we're, we're still, it's a work in progress. And I understand that. But I said right at the beginning of the session, we shouldn't leave this session unless we have absolute confidence that the hands were not being tied and that resources were there to protect our children. And just to, just to add on to that, that, that part of this is we should not have left this session without even creating a vehicle or a mechanism to be able to get it fixed. Because now, any of the recommendations that come forth or spring forth from the group that's doing the study, if they if they need any type of legislative fix, then guess what? It's not going to take place until next year again. No. So we should have at least put together a mechanism that if something needs to be done on the legislator side, we could right. put something together where the administration could actually follow that we, and got it done. We do have a resolution out there which does uh, create an ongoing legislative uh, committee or interim committee to receive this further information from uh, this audit and from the governor's office. I would add to that, Leader, that we shouldn't hesitate to tell the governor, if need be, call us back into a special session if it's necessary to provide them with the resources or to take on the legislative action. It's too important to wait till That would be one thing I th think everybody would agree that it would be all right for us to come back to do what we need to do to make sure that our children yeah. are protected. And I've made this statement many times and I'll continue to say this, if there is a, if just one child one child's life is in danger, then I demand that we come back here for a special session. Absolutely. Senator Landon, are you happy with the CBD oil bill that's still out there? Um, I just saw a revised conference report. Uh, there was an issue, I think, uh, the uh, 
previous version allowed for the sale of CDB oil with a lot of labeling requirements and what have you. It still, however, made it illegal to manufacture the CDB oil. Uh, I think this latest reiteration I just got does allow for manufacturing, too. I've got to look at the details of that. Um, there's a lot of probably some, you know, red tape that I would have necessarily thought was necessary in this bill, but I think that may be necessary to get it through the Republican Senate Republican Caucus. I don't know. At least I'm hoping that we'll have a bill that will uh, legalize the purchase over the counter of CDB oil, and I think that's the important thing. Yeah. Are you guys satisfied with the uh, school funding fix, and why did it take until the last day of session to get that done? Well, I think uh, some schools are, I think the schools that had been promised the money that they were going to get then actually had it taken away because of the shortfall, the miscalculation in the funding. Those folks are definitely uh, happy that they're going to get the money that they were promised. I think there's a caveat in this bill, though, that's going to penalize schools, and that's saying that you can't count a kindergartner, a kindergartner unless they're five years old. And we understand that there's some folk, some children who are more advanced, they can begin kindergarten at an earlier age. And it just seems like every time we try to move in the right direction, they always throw up another hurdle, another stumbling block uh, to try to create real progress in education. It's really disheartening when you see those things. But I'll tell you this, every superintendent, that, including myself, that was guaranteed an, a certain amount of money, then, then we told we weren't going to get it, and now we told we are. We're, going, we're happy with that part of the bill, absolutely. 